I am Glenn A. Baker. I'm a music commentator and broadcaster, and I have the wonderful task of watching the evolution and the flowering of great Australian entertainment acts. I watch them as they grow and take over Australia, and in some few cases, take over the world, which is why we're talking about the Wiggles right now, because no Australian act that I can think of has taken over the world quite in the manner that the Wiggles have. I mean, that, theirs is an astonishing story. The Wiggles had an amazing, uh, quite unique beginning. Um, Anthony and Jeff were actually in a band together. Actually, I was, I was in the band as well. We were called The Cockroaches. And we had uh, a gold album and a platinum album and quite, quite a bit of success and good fun, made about a dozen film clips. And uh, so we, we really rode the last wave of the pub rock era in. So perhaps a lot of parents out there may have seen us perform somewhere. <laughs> uh, we had a fantastic time. Um, but we had a family tragedy in 1988. My, my daughter Bernadette died from sudden infant death syndrome. And so we pulled out of touring largely. Um, and Anthony went back to university. He had started a degree in early childhood studies. And he thought that was the time to go back to that. And of course he met Murray Cook at university. And Greg Page, who was a, Wiggles, uh, a Crocoaches fan back in those days and actually worked for us as a roadie. <laughs> he said, come to this university, it's really fantastic, I'm really enjoying it. And he decided to combine both his musical background and his education uh, to record an album for children. And I think they came to this with the desire to do it for all the right reasons. And also, they had that magic ingredient that really marks you down for great success, and that is everyone told them it wasn't going to work. Um, so he actually took that album to uh, the ABC, and um, Meryl Gross, the woman who was working there, had been at festival records where the cockroaches were. And she thought, well, I had good success with them. You know, let's see where we go. And she said at the time, look, you may sell anywhere between 300 to 3,000 copies of this, I'm not really sure. And at the time, Anthony thought, well, hey, 3,000, that'd be fantastic. Well, that particular album went on to sell over 100,000 albums, but they've sold now, um, what time is it? Sorry. Yeah, they've sold <laughs> over 7 million CDs, but 23 million videos and DVDs, which is phenomenal. It's historical what they've done. The success is extraordinary when you think about it. I mean, we know the great Australian rock bands that have you know that have had success I mean you know we know you know the NXS's and the men at work and they've had their moment in Sun and their number one albums in America and they you know their platinum success but the only thing that came out of Australia that you could really properly compare the Wiggles to is ACDC I mean I'm walking through the exhibition here and I see a front cover of the New York Times the most venerable newspaper in America and the Wiggles are on the front page. The story of Greg handing over, over to Sam, and I thought, I don't think in excess of got on the front cover of the New York Times. I don't think Australian Prime Ministers get on the front cover of the New, of the New York Times. When you're out there with the Wiggles, Cindy Crawford's in the audience, or Seinfeld, or De Niro, or if you're here in Sydney, as I found last Christmas, Kate Blanchett is sitting beside you with her kids. I mean, the world turns out to see the Wiggles. But what occurred to me in watching that was that the Wiggles had to have come from Australia. They couldn't have been an American creation. If Americans had tried to create this, it would have been cloying, sentimental, calculated. A bunch of guys in a boardroom would have worked out some process by which they talk down to kids and give them what they think kids should have. The lovely thing about the Wiggles is they started out as a good time sort of rockabilly, rock and roll band. They understood their audiences. They they understood the organic process of just sort of you know coming online and building a following and they transferred that to the Wiggles and they don't speak down to the kids they speak to the kids. The core value of the Wiggles is engaging their audience you know and when I say engaging like preschool teachers you've got to you know um, get their attention and get them doing something uh, in some way, otherwise they walk, they, <laughs> they just move away. So you'll notice with the Wiggle songs, a lot of, there are a lot of actions and simple actions that children can do. If you add onto that then, fantastic pop music, uh, rock and roll music and catchy music, then that's a recipe that very few others have. They have like Beach Boys harmonies, 
Beatles song structures, Chuck Berry guitar riffs, all the great elements of classic pop and rock and roll all come into moulding this sort of wiggle sound. We were playing the Beacon Theatre in New York where the Stones have played and, you know, great, great place. And New York Square, you know, you can suddenly get a call, as we did, Robert De Niro would like to come to the show. Is that cool? <laughs> it's like, yeah. And of course the guys were very aware who was in the audience. And his partner was very joyfully watching the show and, you know, animated and bouncing around as was his little boy. And De Niro was there with popcorn, I kid you not, really studying the guys, like really watching them closely and eating. Like, the guys often say it's like that scene out of Cape Fear, you know, when he's in the theatre, you know. So to me, for someone who was very plainly an adult, there was a lot of stuff, like the New York Times cover, magazine covers, exhibits that, that, that I found were incredibly interesting. Yet there was youngsters running, rushing by me with a huge velocity to get to paint with their hands or to get to do this or do that sort of thing. So it is a multi-layered exhibition. And um, you know what? It's an exhibition of something that brings a smile to somebody's face. <laughs>